Okay, yeah, Alright, let's do it. Oh. Alright, here we go. Wow. Hi there everyone, welcome to Bristol on a very English day and behind us is the Clifton Suspension Bridge. Not only one of the most beautiful places in Bristol, I think this is one of the most beautiful things in the whole world. Now I'm here with Laura Hilton from the bridge and she's going to take us to a part of the Clifton Suspension Bridge that hardly anyone ever gets to see. In fact, I only recently learned it existed. These are secret hidden vaults under the bridge. That's right, isn't it? That's right, yeah. The vaults are underneath the Lee Woods Tower, that big red sandstone abutment, that outcrop that you see there. Inside that there's 12 vaulted chambers. So this bridge has been open since 1864 and when were these vaults found? 2002. 2002. And two. Yeah. That was a well kept secret. It was, yeah. We're going to go over there, we're going to tell you how the vaults were found, and then we're going to go inside. All right, so we're on the Clifton side now. That's right. Bristol proper is out that way. That's right. The other side is Lee Woods, and below us is the Avon Gorge. Mm -hmm. A long way below us is the Avon Gorge. 74 metres. 74 metres down. Yeah. And how far is it across the bridge? What's the span? It's 215 metres across. When the construction started on this bridge, it was going to be the highest and the longest bridge in the world. And it was at this time going to be the third suspension bridge built in the modern style in the UK. So it was a really big project. It required a lot of engineering know-how, a lot of new skills to actually make this work. It was ambitious for the time. That's right, yes. Right. And there's a famous man behind it all. Yeah, so uh, the bridge was originally designed by Isambard Kingdom Brunel, right. who grew up to become one of the most important engineers in Victorian industrial Britain. And he wore much nicer hats than us. He did, yeah. yes. Okay. <laughs> actually, it, he never saw it. He never saw it. He actually died before the bridge was completed, and he never got the chance to walk across it. So in Brunel's time, all he actually managed to build were the abutments, which will go inside, and the towers which are on the top. So when Brunel died, it was still just a big wide gorge with two big towers. That's right, yes. And then after he died, basically a whole bunch of engineers said, this is a travesty that we never built this thing. They got their act together and finally got the thing finished. Brunel never got to walk across it, but we're going to do that right now. Yeah, we are. All right. This is one of my favourite parts of the whole bridge because we're right here in the middle and now the chain has sort of dipped low enough that we can touch it and... Is this so people don't bang their head? It is so people don't bang their head. A bit of rubber there, and look, yeah. you can feel the <laughs> bolts. It's all like, this is the real deal. <laughs> Built to last. Built to last. Yeah. This yeah. is where the two ends were joined when they ah, made it. Ah, so this is the proper, proper middle, is it? This yeah. is the middle. Like everything came in and was bolted together here. So what's the view here? This is... This is a view over Bristol. Right. The tide's out, so the river looks very muddy at the moment. That's right, yeah. That's the River Avon. And that's one of my favourite pubs. <laughs> that's lovely in the summer. Yeah, that's yeah. the White Lion. Great view. All right, we've walked across the Avon Gorge now. We're on the Lee Woods side of the bridge. We're standing above these vaults. Trust me, they are coming. We are <laughs> going to go down there in a minute. But first, you're going to tell us the story of well, how they were lost and how they were found. Brunel worked on this bridge off and on from 1830 until 1853 and after that all the money had run out. So Brunel went off to work on the Great Western Railway and on his ships and this whole site just got closed down and abandoned and we think that this is when Brunel's plans for the abutments got lost. We don't know where they are so if anybody knows, if anyone's seen them anywhere we'd love to to get a copy. When you say the abutments, you mean the big structures upon which these towers are built and That's things right. like that? That's okay. right, yes. So whatever was inside these structures at either side was like a great mystery. That's right. All right, until? Until 2002. Right. It was actually entirely by accident that they finally found the entrance, which is what you're standing on right um, now. Well, so what happened? There's a chap named Ray who's very important in That's this story. Right. That's tell us, right. Tell us about Ray. So Ray's job was to lay all of this paving that we're standing on now. So in 2002, he was replacing the stones that were laid in 1864 for the opening of the bridge. Yeah. And when he took them up, Underneath them, he found two railway sleepers just under the ground, and he thought, well, that's really unusual. What are they doing there? And when they lifted those railway sleepers up, they found 
a round shaft, like a little well. Ray shone his torch down into there and couldn't see the bottom. So they thought, OK, well, there's only one thing we can do. We're going to have to lower somebody in there yeah. and see what he can find. Well, if you pardon the pun, we like puns here on Objectivity, <laughs> you've built up a lot of suspense mm -hmm. as to what's going to be in there. <laughs> I think it's time for us to go down and have a look for ourselves. All right. Look at this. This is proper Indiana Jones, this is. Though Indiana Jones probably doesn't need the handles or the hard hat. I can't help noticing there's a door here. There's a door here now, <laughs> yes. Right, so this was, you knocked through a door after it was discovered, obviously. That's right. Oh, well done. Okay. All right, here we go. We're in. Wow. It's higher than I expected. I thought it was going to be quite claustrophobic. Yeah, but it's, it's almost, pretty big, isn't it? It's like a cathedral. Yeah. They are like stalactites. That's right, yeah. They're really long and really thin. Yeah, they're called straw stalactites because they're long and thin and hollow in the middle. Amazing. Like, I have complete faith in the bridge, mm -hmm. but seeing how hollow this is suddenly makes me think, wow, this holds all that weight in there. Yeah. But if you look at, uh, see here, there's a little trapdoor in the roof. That's at the very thinnest part of the roof there. Yeah. And that actually comes out underneath the toll barriers at the surface but that is still two meters thick there and towards the bottom of the arch the walls getting maybe well the ceilings getting maybe to seven meters thick yeah and in some places the walls are 13 meters thick yeah so it's it's unbelievably solid and strong oh, i will keep driving over it <laughs> <laughs> this big pile of rubble here this is actually from the construction of the towers we think the men who were building the towers had worked on the construction of the abutments they knew about this trapdoor in the ceiling yeah and instead of tidying away all their offcuts nice and neatly like they were meant to they tipped them through the hole while nobody was looking you can tell it's like under the trapdoor as that's well that's right yeah all oh, right yeah there's 12 vaults in this structure. There's seven on the top layer and then there's five on the lower layer. So right now we're on the first floor. We're in what we call vault number four. We're going to go through in a minute and have a look at vault number five. In the basement level underneath vault number five, there's another chamber the same as that and another four around it. You can see behind us here, there's the original rock of the gorge, this big brown lump here. Can I touch it? You can touch it. So that's the Carboniferous Limestone of the Avon Gorge, and that slopes all the way back up to the pavement yep. and all the way down to the river. This is the way through into Vault Number 5. This is an original corridor. Yep. It's quite low, yep. so you need to duck down. OK, here we go. Ugh. I'm through. So right now, the road is directly above our heads here. The deck begins just over here. So where is Ray's hole, the hole that led to the discovery? So if you see these little access shafts, there's one here yeah. and there's one above us. That leads to another chamber, does that it? That leads to another chamber. And then another little tunnel like this leads to a vertical access shaft. Okay. And then that would bring us out at the manhole where we were standing earlier. <laughs> It's really elaborate. It is. I would have no qualms going through there and investigating more, but you know, <laughs> I don't want to set a bad example for I others. I mean, you might do if you knew what was at the end of here, because really? at the end of this tunnel, there's a vertical shaft that goes down another 20 meters. So <laughs> if you did crawl into that um, and you didn't manage to get yourself around the corner very well, then it would be really difficult to get you back out again. Okay, well, you know, <laughs> we've got more videos to make, so we can't risk that. <laughs> It's a real hidden treasure of a bridge that is already a treasure. So our thanks to Ray, I guess. Yeah, absolutely. Hope you're good with heights, because if we go to the centre, it's a long way down. Oh, I'm, I'm <laughs> very, very comfortable with heights. <laughs> is it scary? A little bit. <laughs> so again, just watch your head. OK. Watching heads, people. Oh my god. Oh, oh my god. <laughs> I'm proper scared now. I'm so scared. <laughs>